you're already familiar with using the scanner. Now the only difference is we're using the scanner not with the keyboard, but with a file as input. So all of the methods that you're already familiar with using uh, with scanner will still work, but the input's coming from a file instead. And here we have the UML diagram that captures all of these different methods that can be used with scanner. We now have an example program that reads from a file as opposed to writing to a file, which is what we did last time. Notice though that we have to declare our main method as throwing an exception because whenever a scanner is involved it's possible that you could throw an exception and you need to then declare that in your code. We create a file object just like we did before in about the fifth line of the code where you see java.io.file and then we give the object the name file and we say equals new java.io.file and then in brackets we have a quoted string scores.txt. So we're opening the same name of file that we did before and now we can go ahead and read from it. Uh, we then, or, well we can't quite yet, we have to first of all associate a scanner with it. So that happens in the next line we say scanner input equals scanner and we give it an argument of file. And now we have some an object called input which can be used to read from the text file scores.txt which is now open and ready to be read from. We're going to do this in the context of a while loop and we're going to keep reading as long as there is more to read from the file. There is a has next method that you see right in the middle of this slide with the while that we can use. It's a method that indicates whether or not there's more data in the file. So if you say input.hasNext that will either return false or true. It returns a boolean. If it returns true it means there is more in the file and if it returns turns false then that means the file is empty and there's nothing else left to read in the file. Uh, when that happens then of course we're going to stop iterating on the while loop. But as long as there is more input we will loop through repeatedly and do the remaining lines that you see in that next block. First thing we do is we declare a string called first name and we set it equal to input.next. So we're going to get the next string from the input. We do that once again for the middle initial and we do that once again for the last name. You will recall that the file we created a couple of slides ago had names that always had a first name, a middle initial and a last name. So because that's the data that's there, this should work with no problem and should return the first name, last name and middle initial. The next thing on the line wasn't a string, it was a number, it was an integer. So now we can input it by saying int score equals input.nextInt. And again, you're familiar with using nextInt in the context of a scanner reading from the keyboard. So this isn't a new idea for you. Then we have four different pieces of information. A first name, a last name, a middle initial, and a score. We can now print them all out by doing system.out.println and concatenate them all together with blanks between each one. And what we should see printed is a mirror image of what we originally wrote out to the file earlier with those two names and those two scores. Notice at the end of it all we do an explicit input dot close to close the file. You could think of how you would rewrite this code slightly to use the try with resources syntax instead to do the same job and then of course the input dot close would be unnecessary. When reading data from a text file using scanner, you can use all of the expected methods that you're used to for input, next byte, next short, next int, next long, next float, next double, and next by itself. And that will read up to the appropriate delimiters between these different kinds of inputs. By default, the delimiters that are used, of course, are simply white space characters, meaning tabs and blanks and new line characters. But you can specify other kinds of delimiters, including regular expressions, which we studied earlier, to make new patterns for the delimiters. We won't look at any examples of doing that, but we're just mentioning it now so you know that that capability does exist. The next line method will read a line ending with a line separator, in other words, a new line character. It's noteworthy that when you are reading uh, using delimiters, the delimiter after the token is not part of the input and is actually removed from the stream of data. So in other words, if the next line method is invoked after doing some token-based 
input methods, then what will happen is that method will read from the characters that start from that delimiter and end with the line separator. So the line separator gets read, but it's not actually part of the string that gets returned by the next line methods. So you do have to be careful about mixing and matching token-based input with next line. This next slide helps illustrate the problem that was alluded to on the previous slide. Let's suppose we have a text file that contains 3, 4, blank, 5, 6, 7. If we're trying to mix and match using next line with token based input like next int, we can see that a problem can happen here. Here what we've done in the top line of code is created a scanner called input uh, and we've opened test.text containing this 3, 4, blank, 5, 6, 7. If we then do an input.nextInt, what will happen is we will read up to but exclude the blank after the 4 and recognize that that is an integer, that's the next integer in the input stream, and we will take it out of the file. So the 3 and the 4 is now gone, and the number, the numeric value, the primitive int 34, has now been assigned to value. However, in the file, the blank is still sitting there. And if we were to do an input.next line, in that case, we would actually get the blank and the 5 and the 6 and the 7. That's probably not what was necessarily intended, but that is what would happen. 